let me ask you something do you want to be scared do you want to get cozy this holiday season do you want to possibly fall in love with somebody that's not a human okay so let's get into this black ass halloween reading guide that i put together for y'all welcome or welcome back to chocolate covered pages i'm kiona and in this video we are going to be talking about some black ass books but in different categories for the halloween season i got some ghosts i got some paranormal i got some cozies i got i got a few little things in this list here that i really hope i have something for everybody and if i don't obviously let me know down in the comments and i got you and y'all know I don't do too much talking, so let's get straight into it. So the first category is going to be Dark Academia. You know, we all, we love Dark Academia, okay? It's, it's definitely been taking the reading world by storm, so it's only right that I include it in this list. So the first one I want to talk about is the newest one that I have finished, and that's going to be An Academy for Liars by Alexis Henderson. So on paper, Lennon seems to have it all she has a very you know well-to-do fiance but she finds her fiance in a very compromising position and she runs off like you know what I, I gotta get out of here I gotta get out of here I don't know where I'm going but I'm getting out of here and as she is on the run pretty much she gets a mysterious phone call and the phone call is telling her to be at this spot at this time basically if you want to change your life and she's like you know what i don't have nothing to lose i really don't i don't got nothing going on for me right now so she goes to drayton college and she doesn't know what she just she doesn't know what drayton college is about apparently drayton college is a college for people who have special abilities you have to take multiple tests to get in and in this college it is all about teaching students how to control other people with their minds so Lennon decides to of course enroll because if she didn't we wouldn't even have a book so she enrolls and a lot of things about this school is a bit sinister I love the atmosphere. One thing about Alexis Henderson is that she is going to give us some atmosphere, okay? She knows what she's doing when it comes to atmosphere in multiple books of hers. I would say that I recommend this for someone that is also a fan of The Secret History by Donna Tartt because it reminded me of that book. I was not a fan of The Secret History myself. I ended up DNFing The Secret History, but there was a lot of similarities. The reason why is because this is a college, but then you have these secret societies within this college that are very like hush hush and you know you got to do something strange for some change basically to get into these secret societies and that is kind of where I saw the comparisons uh, with that book. There are a lot of characters in this book I will say that. I love that Alexis Henderson is not afraid to spill blood because that is typically what happens in a lot of dark academia books is people going to die another thing that i really enjoyed about this book is how every time when you think that you have this entire school figured out there's another reveal and another reveal and another twist there's one twist in this book that was that had me that had me shook because uh I, I did definitely did not see it coming so i was very impressed so next up we have ghosts so first up, we have a very recent one that I finished, and that's going to be This Cursed House by Del Sandine. And this book is considered a gothic, southern, horror, historical fiction book. 
So it's got, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of little things in it, okay? So it is set in the 1960s. We are following Gemma and Gemma decides that she is going to leave Chicago. She has had enough. I don't even want to tell y'all what was going on in Chicago for her. You just going to have to read it for yourself. But anyway, Gemma decides, you know what? I'm done with Chicago. She gets a letter basically offering her a job in New Orleans to work for the Duchon family. Now, she don't really know what she's supposed to be doing. She's assuming that she's going to be a tutor, but she don't really know because the letter didn't actually say you're going to be tutoring. She's just assuming. So this girl goes to New Orleans and I'm just telling y'all right now that I was really loving everything about the setting of this book, specifically because I love New Orleans. I love New Orleans so much, okay? And I was just loving all of the descriptions about the food, about, you know, the the towns, you know, the way they were speaking. I was loving everything about that, okay? And it definitely was bringing the gothic vibes. I just want to tell y'all right now, make sure you get into this audiobook because when the narrator starts using the voices for the ghosts, no. You can't tell me it's not going to be atmospheric and creepy as hell because it is completely like, ooh. Like, I was at work and I was listening and I was just like, what did he, what did he just say? Like, because it was, the voice was getting real deep. She sounded like how you would think a ghost would sound. Tired, crusty, you know, all the things. Like, it's been around for too long. It's tired, all right? So, we don't know why the Deshaun family wants Gemma to start working there. And she comes there. They offer her $300 a week, which back in those days, baby, you was rich. You was rich if you had $300 a week job, like... You live in the life. So she's, you know, she's there. She meets this entire family. And then she starts to notice little strange things. The fact that when she first arrived to this neighborhood and she asked about the Duchon family, nobody wasn't even really trying to bring her close to where the house was. It was just like, oh, you're going to work for them? Oh, well, well, baby, it stops right here. Um, I'm gonna let you out right here. Um, you could just walk the rest of the way, cause I ain't, I ain't going down there. Okay? So I, <laughs> I found that to be really fun, really fun. I had definitely figured out one of the twists fairly early on. But there were so many twists upon twists upon twists that I was like. You know, as I was going through the rest of the book, because I thought, I was like, I, I, I figured out the twist, you know, we're, we're done here. But we were not done. We were not done at all. There was more for me to uncover, and I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that very much. I love this cover. The cover is very sinister. It lets you know it's going to be some strange things going on in this book, and... She did not disappoint. I like how this book definitely touches on colorism within the black community for sure. Um, it talks about passing. And one thing that we find out about Gemma fairly early on is that she can see ghosts. Um, she was always told by her forced appearance, don't look at them, don't act like they're not even there, just keep it moving you know and this is something that Gemma has been dealing with for pretty much all of her life and when she gets to the Duchon family's home she sees even more of them and yeah I'm I'm just gonna leave it at that for y'all because I just feel like this is a book that you want to know as least as possible and just go straight into it just know you're going to be in uncovering some secrets. There's going to be ghosts just popping up out of nowhere. And yeah. 
<laughs> and of course, I cannot talk about ghosts without bringing up Beloved by Toni Morrison. This is one of my favorite ghost novels. This is also considered horror, but so I've just kind of moved it out of the horror category and slid it on over here because we're specifically talking about ghosts. And this book, I know, first of all, I know many people know what this book is about, but then there are also some people who still don't know what this book is about. So real quick. So in Beloved, we are following Setha and Setha was born a slave. Even though she has escaped to Ohio, Ohio and she's been living there for I want to say like 15 years she is being haunted by the ghost of her baby that she never got a chance to name there is just a single headstone for this child and it just says beloved and the baby is literally haunting the hell out of her in this book it's funny, but it's not funny so far so far this is my favorite Toni Morrison book hands down um obviously i do need to read some more but for now this is her okay and i know that a lot of people when when they think of horror they don't typically think of this book at all but listen to me there are some horrific things taking place in this book. Another book with some ghosts, we have of course The Reformatory by Todd and Arif Du. I have been talking about this book for, I've been talking about this book for literally a year straight. No lie. I've been talking about this book for a year straight. Since I finished this book last year, October, I've been telling y'all about this book and you still ain't read it. So listen, the reformatory we are following robert jr and his older sister gloria robert jr gets into a little kerfuffle with the white kid that uh lives near their home somebody sees and robert gets sent away to the reformatory which is a boys school which is not actually a boys school it is a place where they are torturing boys um and shockingly this place is filled with a lot of ghosts because terrible things have happened to them they have not been able to be at rest and robert jr can see them this book is a lot keep that in mind it's a lot but it's also something that is very necessary so please do pick this one up um Tana Nareev do you know she's that girl what, what can I say and I will be lying if I said this was her only book on this list I mean this is what she does this is her season you can't even mention Halloween without Tana Nareev do what are we talking about? Okay, next I want to talk about some thrillers. I kept this one fairly short because I just put out a recent video about thrillers. And you could definitely check it out. I have the link below or up above. A thriller that y'all should be reading is called The Perfect Sister by Desiree. This book is unlike any book I've ever read. This book is about a cult. And the cult is called Black Women Separatists. And this is a cult for black women. These women consider all black women to be the superior gender, to be the superior race. And they have their own beliefs and rules. And they also have an entire community. So it literally is a cult of just black women and black girls and anyone that's not that is not allowed to be in this community and it could get real aggressive for you if you attempt to do anything against the black women in this cult. I mean Desiree did her thing. That this is my first Desiree and it definitely will not be my last because she did her thing okay she made an entire community of these women they had their own you know terms there are there are also factions of the different black women in this community there is the faction where 
um they're all about sexual liberation you know they're all about um planting and feeding the community right and then you have the other faction where these are the women that are protecting the other women all these women do all they learn to do from when they're young is fight okay they will take you down they do not play they are there to protect the community and then you also have women that pretty much they just want to have children so at first glance this cult seems kind of okay like <laughs> Like, I was reading it and I was like, okay, so what's the problem? Like, you know, they not bothering nobody. Oh, but they, baby, they bothering some folks. They, 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 because what happens when a woman inside of the cult gives birth to a boy? This is when we meet one of the main characters named Callan. And Callan has a complete vendetta against this community because he knows that he was born in this community and his mom gave him up when he was born. So he feels a lot of anger towards the community because he just feels like y'all all are scum. Okay, I know what my mother did to me and he has made it his mission in life to take down this community he is also a detective so he has been using his resources as a detective to try to take this community down then we are also following a young lady named pandora and pandora is very oblivious to what is going on outside of the community a lot of the girls who have grown up in this community they know nothing about the outside world they are shown videos from when they are young of men doing terrible things to women and they have showing them this on a loop and basically like you see this this is why you can't trust men this is why men are bad they are terrible soon as you come in contact with one they're gonna attack you they mean you nothing good nothing good could ever come from coming in contact with a man just seeing it you don't you don't want to do that and i found that to be really funny <laughs> like it was just humorous and i mean the girls would be like oh my god a male like i cannot come in contact with a male and i'm just thinking to myself girl you don't even know what you missing like <laughs> There is also a book two to this. I like book one more than I like book two, but definitely you're going to want to read book two as well. So definitely get into those if you're here for the thriller vibes. And the reason why this is underneath the thrillers is because it literally is. There's so many secrets and we are racing to get the answers to all all of it this book is literally this cult is like an onion because the more you keep peeling back the more you realize oh my god because on the surface it feels like this is great but then you find out um it's a whole lot of stuff going on in this cult it's 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 a lot of stuff so that is all I'm going to tell you about this one. But definitely pick this one up. It is also on Kindle Unlimited if you have that membership. Another thriller I want to talk about is Secrets on King's Drive by Keita Denise. This is a book that I went into it thinking that it was going to be more of a romance. Yes, there is a romance in it, but this book felt very much more so like a thriller. So we're going to keep it in a thriller category. In this book, we meet a girl named Haven. And Haven has just survived a natural disaster in Nebraska. She boards a bus and she ends up just getting off this bus. It's like a greyhound, I guess. And she ends up getting off this bus in Virginia, which she knows nothing about. And she gets off and she decides, you know, I need to keep a very low profile. At the beginning of this book, we can tell that she is very secretive. Something has happened. She's running from something. We don't know what or who. But we do know that she has some money. She needs to find some place to live. And when she's looking, she wants to find a place that 
it's pretty much the hood because she knows that they probably not going to be doing no background checks. They probably going to be a little bit lenient on getting, you know, normal documents that you would provide when you're getting a new apartment. And she finds just what she's looking for when she comes across a house that she can rent on King's Drive. When she arrives at King's Drive, she sees that it's one of those blocks where once you turn down it, there are two guys that come out of nowhere with shoddies like, listen what is your business on this block you can't even come down this block unless you live there um you know somebody like you need to state your business immediately so haven moves into this apartment basically the block is its own kind of i, I felt like the block was its own character because a lot of things happen on this block. It's just, it's, it's a certain charm to the block. Like, it is a complete community. And the king of King's Drive is Giovanni. And Giovanni has what people call the pink house. And this is a house where, it's pretty much a trap house, really. Where he sells drugs and... Everybody knows about it. The police don't bother them. The police don't even come down the block. It is just very sinister. And another thing that make, that gives this book a very sinister type of feel is if you look closely on the cover, there's a cemetery on it. Which I didn't even pay attention to until I finished the book. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's a cemetery on it. There is a cemetery in this book that plays a very big part. It constantly gets mentioned throughout this book. So, Haven and Giovanni, you know, they meet each other in, what can I say? You know, there's, there's fireworks and things of that nature. But I love the way Kita Denise handles their interaction. Like, it's not an insta-lovey type of thing. Like, it's... It's very much giving when the time is right, you know. Um, did I want more from Giovanni as a male main character? Yes, but that is just my own personal preference. I really like this book for the actual story. I really loved Haven in this book because Haven is different. Haven got hot pink braids. Um, she does not dress like the other women that live here in this community. You know, she has her own style going on. It's very, like, gothic looking. Um, you know, she got the chunky Mary Janes. Like, she, you know, she's got, like, the little mini skirts with the pleats. Like, she has her own thing going on and, um... You know, it was a breath of fresh air. You know, she didn't have some, you know, 30-inch bust down. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. But we've read stories with women who had that millions of times. So it was nice to see a, you know, just, just you know, some other kind of some uh, some other kind of black women out there you know that had different styles you know so um and i love that she was so smart and um i wish giovanni was smarter but you know haven was very smart and she was really the definition of um what could happen when a man finds a woman that adds to his life instead of taking away um if you get what i'm saying so i really enjoyed this book so much like this book was just fun there was so many secrets it's some secrets we don't even find out the answer until the very end and i love that you know some of these i was not able to some of the twists i was not able to um figure out and i love that for me now let's talk about books that i consider unsettling yes you could put these books in the other categories on this list but for me if i had to describe it i would just say it's unsettling you know it is it didn't scare me first of all it takes a lot to scare me that's number one in a book it takes a lot to scare me but these I'm going to just start right here. 
uh, Lakewood by Megan Giddens. Unsettling as hell. Okay. I can't even really tell you what part of this book is the scariest or the most unsettling. But the entire book just had me on edge like i felt completely uncomfortable the entire book it was affecting my personal life that is how much this book was just a lot okay so in this book we follow lena and lena's grandmother has just passed away leaving a mountain of debt behind so lena decides that she's going to drop out of college because she gets a invitation to participate in these secret clinical trials and with the clinical trials they agree that they are going to pretty much pay for all of the you know the debt that you know has accumulated and they are also going to take care of lena's mom lena's mom has been um I believe she's in a facility or she's hospitalized one of the two and they are going to take care of the bill for that as well and they're also going to pay Lena a, 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 a good amount of money for her to take part in this so in her mind she feels like you know what this is the best thing for me you know it just makes sense so she goes she goes to do this she cannot tell anyone that she's taking part in this she just tells her mom She's doing, uh, she has a job. And this area is where the job is, Lakewood. That is the name of where this area, where these trials are. And the, the, the area is strange itself. Okay, very unsettling. When she gets there, she sees the other people that are, you know, also taking part in the trials. They're all people of color. And then the people that work there, they're all white very uh suspicious okay um but she needs his money so she sticks around they are poking and prodding these people with who knows what this entire book and just waiting to see what happens half of the time you don't know what's real what's not real and uh, we're just seeing it through Lena's point of view. Anytime, anytime someone asks me about this book, I really can only say it's high. It's just highly unsettling. There's so many secrets behind this entire program. I did want more out of the ending. I will say that. But overall, I feel like Megan Giddings just did a fantastic job as far as I'm sure she was going for unsettling and atmospheric because that is what you're going to get. Like very gothic type of vibes because you just know something's not right. You're reading it the whole time and you're just like, something's off here, something's off. But and Lena feels it too, but she just... She ain't got no choice but to continue through with, with the program. Um, but definitely, this one is a great one to have on your list for Halloween. And you know the queen was coming up once again. We have The Between by Tana Nareev Du. This is a book that I don't talk about often enough, I think. In this book, we meet a man named Hilton. And when Hilton was a boy, he was drowning and his grandmother saved him. Hilton then spends the rest of his life, specifically in his adult life, having these very strange dreams um, a lot of which his grandmother is involved with. Sometimes there's other people. Um, this is a book that is described as horror. But for me, um, it wasn't very horrific. What I will say is that it was absolutely unsettling. Because I was definitely the entire time, I kept feeling like I don't know <laughs> what's real, what's not. Um, 
Neither did Hilton. And Hilton don't know what's real and what's not. Baby, I don't either. Let, neither one of us know what the hell is going on in this book. Okay? He, is he talking to people? Is he not talking to people? Is he making it up? So, you really have to be patient with this one. Because we are definitely going to have an unreliable narrator here. This, you know, because we, we, we don't really know what's going on. Like, he keeps thinking back to when he had drowned and he keeps just thinking like you know that was a pivotal a pivotal moment in my life and now I'm alive but I feel weird about it I feel weird about this life that I'm living so it's a few different things going on in this book but of course in true Tananari fashion she ties it all together for us in the end and it's just so well done like this this book is so well done um it definitely does not get talked about enough now i want to talk about some paranormal romance okay because of course we gotta have some for the romance girlies and these books did not disappoint. First up, we have Hall of Dreams by Antoinette Shirell. We follow a woman that gets an invitation for a Halloween party. And she and her friend decide that they're, that they're going to go. You know, they might as well, right? It's a costume party, so her friend is supposed to meet her at this party. She gets there. Her friend is nowhere to be found. And she's like, you know what? Well, baby, I'm just, I'm a mingle, you know, or whatever, until my friend get here. And that is where this book really kicks off and... <laughs> boy was it a night to remember it was a night to remember for her um let's needless to say her friend never showed up at this party she meets draconian <laughs> think like urban fiction paranormal that is that is what this is basically and i don't know i'm starting to feel like I'm starting to feel like I really like urban fiction paranormal. I used to be a paranormal girl back in the day. But urban fiction and paranormal together. Sign me up. When she encounters Draconian. She knows that. She feels a, a, a pull towards him. That she cannot explain. And things get wild. Okay. This little novella was everything that I was hoping it to be. Okay. I'm not going to say what kind of being he is. Let's just say um, if your favorite thug had a little extra uh, superpowers. <laughs> Basically. And this book takes place over the span of, of mostly one night. If you're looking for something that is going to be hot, short, and just really just take you there real quick. Like if it's Halloween night, then this is the book for you. There's also a book too as well. This next one is going to be taken by The Wolfman by Melody Lynch. And this one, this book is only 51 pages so I'm going to keep it very brief with this one. We meet a woman named Claire. And Claire is living in a world where you need your husband's permission to do everything. She is stuck in a marriage from hell. Her husband is very abusive to her. So please check the trigger warnings for that. One night he sends her off to go get him something to eat. And she was telling him, like, listen, I don't like driving at night. And he was like, I really don't care. Go do it. So she gets in, her, in the car. She's driving. And then her car uh, breaks down. And when the car breaks down, it gets very scary for her. It's dark. And then she comes in contact with the wolfman. And the rest of the story is history. Again, another cute, well, I'm not going to say it's cute because there's some DV in this one. So we're not going to say it's cute, but we have another very short Halloween uh, paranormal 
romance that'll really hit the spot like if you don't have a lot of time another one we have is Jessora by Natavia now I'm not gonna lie I freaking love this book I not too long ago finished book two this book is about a woman named Jessora and at the beginning of the book Jessora is a scammer she is a complete scammer. She wants to try to get a job working in this club. Well, her boyfriend is trying to get her to work at this club so that she can basically rob the owner of this club. They've been scamming people for a long time and, you know, this is what she does. Well, she gets a whole, hell of a lot more than what she bargained for when she decides to try to scam Wolfgang. Wolfgang is the owner of this club. And when I tell you this little duology, this one and two, if you have more than enough time on your hands, this the book that you, this these the two books that you read, okay? Clearly, I have been enjoying wolves lately. Hood wolves, clearly. But I'm not mad about it. You know, I really enjoyed getting to know Just Sora in books one and book two and the evolution of her. I mean, her mouth is crazy. I will say that. It's definitely crazy. But, you know... Wolfgang is that dude and he really is the type of dude that he only gonna let you talk crazy to him but for so long before he puts you in your place okay let's just say I really love these two books because you could tell that Natavia really did a lot of research like she but like I have read her urban fiction before but it's almost as if she took all of the drama and the secrets and the twists that she normally does in her urban fiction and she moved it over to paranormal but she just added on top of that with the paranormal um you know with the wolves there's wolves in this book there's coyotes in this book if you love urban fiction but you want to take it a step further for the halloween season this this is where you want to be this is where you want to be i promise there's so many secrets and twists and turns in this book it's like I was just reading like, girl, what else? <laughs> what else? Like the drama. The second book is over 600 pages. And honestly, I see very good reason for that. If it would have been only 200, I would have been pissed because ain't no way, boy. Ain't no way you could finish. You could just wrap everything up the way it needed to be wrapped up. It's a lot of characters in these two novels and we needed to get fully fleshed out information on all of them. Book two, we introduced to even more characters. So, what I love about this series is that Natavia is not afraid to kill people and it's gruesome. I'm going to put the horror title on this series as well because people aren't dying like regular. They're just not, okay? We got wolves involved. So, ah, it's it's just it's just so good. It's so well done. And honestly, I'm looking forward to reading some more from Natavia, from her urban fiction paranormal um, catalog. I also really loved... The theme behind these books where if somebody is meant for you, you're going to find them. You know, you're going to find them. You're always going to um, somehow, some way, fate is going to pull you guys back together. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And now we're going to talk about some cozy mysteries. I personally am not the biggest fan of cozy mysteries. Um, I used to read some back in the day. But as of right now, they are, um, you know, not my preference. But I know some of y'all do because I've been asked about them before. So I didn't want to leave y'all cozy folks out. I put a couple on this list. 
so y'all can check it out i have not read them of course because i ain't interested but y'all might be so i'ma just tell y'all um what this one is what these books are about so the first one i have is the plot is murder by v m burn and of course this book is set in a small town like all cozy mysteries are and this one is about a woman named samantha and samantha finally fulfills her dream of opening a mystery bookshop and then while she's opening this mystery bookshop she thinks of another dream she had which she had which is writing a mystery novel so she got this bookshop she writing her mystery novel and then all of a sudden a, a realtor who she don't even like ends up dead in her back in the backyard of the bookshop so of course naturally everyone thinks that she did it so now she decides that she needs to personally find out who has killed this man so that she can clear her name? And next we have A Glimmer of Death by Valerie Wilson Wesley. And this is the first book in the Odessa Jones series. So Odessa Jones is a woman that she's always had the ability to read people's emotions and foretell danger. So after she becomes a widow, she realizes that she needs to make more money. So she begins working for a boss that she really can't stand. And then one day the boss ends up dead. So they are accusing some guy who also works there that did not like the boys. And then she decides that she needs to use her gifts of foretelling and um, of reading people's emotions to try to find out who actually killed this man. Now let's get into some horror. The first book we're going to talk about is Highway 725 by Octavia Grant. Now the girl's been going on and on about Octavia Grant so I had to see for myself what all she had going on. I decided to pick up this one because this is one of her recent ones that have just come out. I haven't really seen anybody talking about it so I wanted to check it out for myself. So this book is only 125 pages so I'm not going to spend too much time on it but what I will say is that one check your trigger warnings if you read in octavia grant you already know you about to be uh triggered as hell okay it's gonna be all types of stuff and strange things going on okay we follow a man named caesar and caesar caesar has a lot of guilt I'm not going to lie. Caesar messed up badly and he has a lot of guilt and anger and rage. And he raised his daughter and his daughter has taken on that anger and rage as well. And they both find a way to deal with it by killing people. So we have a father-daughter team of serial killers. And I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> it's a very unique premise. Yeah, check it out. Just check it out. It's a lot of what in the hell type of moments. Um, Yeah. And of course, we can't talk about horror without throwing in The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. This one is young adult horror. It is a retelling of Carrie and um we meet madison and madison is biracial but she is living with her white father and her white father has always wanted her to pass he straightens her hair constantly on a weekly basis which is i'm just like just hearing i'm like girl i know your ends are fried <laughs> like i know your hair is fried but anyway he has been hot combing her hair on a weekly basis for years and then one day um her hit she's out on the field she's outside during school time and a trickle of water hits that head and it absolutely curls up and everybody just starts to make make a complete spectacle of her and start to suspect that you know um she can't possibly be one of us you know not that they was you know so nice and cool with her before this happened let's be clear they really wasn't 
checking for her then. But then they began to, you know, target her after that happened. And this, in turn, creates a lot of anger, a lot of resentment. And then the very popular black boy who also goes to the school decides that he's going to take her to the prom. Well, if you're seeing Carrie, if you're seeing Carrie, you know how this ends. And it ain't good, okay? Um, there's a lot of blood. <laughs> there's a lot of blood. There's, there's many things going on. And I loved it. I loved it, okay? That's when I was like, okay, yes. Yes, this is this is what I had hoped to read when I picked it up and Tiffany D. Jackson did not disappoint on this one. And we have another Tana Nareev do on this list and that's going to be The Good House. This was my first Tana Nareev do book that I read and that's when I knew that she was someone that I wanted to continue to read. In this book, we follow a woman named Angela. At the beginning of this book, Angela goes back to stay at her grandmother's old home. And while she's there, a terrible tragedy takes place. And it's so terrible, she leaves, right? She leaves and then... For some reason, she decides to come back to this home a few years later because she finds out that the same thing may be happening again, but to other people. So she decides to try to find out what is happening, why is this happening, and try to stop it. There is... um you know, there's a lot of talk about um, voodoo in this book. Um, there, there, There's a lot of things going on in this book. And I, I just, I just loved it. The only thing that I will say is that I do feel like this one is a little bit too long. That's my only critique for this one. But other than that, I very much enjoyed it. Okay, and I cannot talk horror without out putting his man on this list and that is going to be Victor Laval Lone Women. This is his most recent horror book. I love this book so much. I love this book from the very beginning to the very end. Everything about it. We meet a woman named Adelaide. Adelaide has decided that she is going to leave California. She is going to head to Montana to become a homesteader. And while she's heading there, she is carrying a very big trunk with her. We don't know what's in the trunk for a very long time. Um, I promise when you do find out what's in the trunk, you're going to be shocked. <laughs> you're going to be shocked. It's not anything that you could have even, it's not any, anything you could have even uh, imagined, right? Um, every time the trunk is open, people seem to disappear and she is going to Montana with this trunk and um, she starts to try to make a life for herself there. And we are seeing, uh, obviously, of, of course, a lot of racism. This book is set in 1915. Yes, most of this town is white, but you know, when the article came out in the newspaper calling for people to come to Montana to be homesteaders, they didn't actually specify that, you know, your race or your gender. It just said a person. So, the Adelaide was a person. I found this book to be very feminist. Um, I loved it. I honestly could not tell that a man had written this book. And I thought that that was good because you know a lot of times when men are writing female characters you could just tell that it's a man writing it right but i think that victor laval does a very good job um depicting female friendships and um female feelings yeah i i i appreciate it that he that he went there you know um female desires 
you know so i i honestly feel like this might be his best one that i have read so far and then it wasn't on this list but i'ma just drop it on here anyway the changeling make sure you pick up the changeling if you haven't already that one i consider more of a dark fairy tale with like the woods and all of that type of stuff but this one this one feels more this one feels more real you know if that if that makes sense but nevertheless why don't you just pick up both of them <laughs> just pick them all up i hope that you have gotten something from this video and make sure you give me a like if you haven't already comment down below and let me know if you have any additional recommendations that you'd like to give out for the halloween season and subscribe if you have not already and i'll catch y'all in the next video bye